Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDevFuel and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over how to build a component using Go, Temple and Alpine.js. If you want to see the final result, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to the code repo and you can also use that code repo to see how to set up this tag stack from scratch again with Go, Temple, Tailwind CSS and Alpine.js. With this said, let's build the dropdown component. First of all, we want to create a new directory inside the template directory that we'll call component and inside this directory we want to create a new file that we'll call dropdown.temple. And let's open this file and let's first of all specify the package name which is going to be component. And now let's see how we can build the dropdown component since this is going to include two different components. The dropdown component itself which will include the trigger and then the wrapper around all of the items and then we'll have a separate component to specify each one of the items that we want inside of the dropdown. So let's paste this here and let's take a look at everything that's happening inside of this file. First of all we have a dropdown struct which only includes a label. So this is the only information that we need to pass into this dropdown component which is going to be the label of the button that we'll use as a trigger. Then to render this we simply need to call this function inside of our template and we need to pass a slice of options and the type is going to be a function that takes in as an argument a pointer to the dropdown struct and then it is going to also return the exact same thing. Here inside of the function we want to initialize this pointer to the dropdown struct then we run to range through each one of the options and then we call the option function. And since we pass here the pointer to the dropdown this function can then modify the values of the struct or actually the fields of the struct and we then are going to be able to return the dropdown here with all of its information. Then we want to specify all of the functions that are going to be used to modify the behavior of the dropdown. In the case of the dropdown, we only have one option which will allow us to set the label. So we'll use this with dropdown label function. This is going to take one argument which is the label and it has the type of string and it needs to return a function that takes in the pointer to the dropdown. And then that's exactly what we are going to do inside of this function. We need to return this function that takes in the pointer to the dropdown. And to be able to modify the label, we do that down here. So we say d.label equals l. And this label is going to be the one that we have here inside of this struct. Next, to be able to render this without having to call any additional methods, we are going to implement the render method on the dropdown struct and the shape of this needs to be the following. We need to pass in a context first of all and then an IO writer and this needs to return an error. And by implementing this method with this exact shape, Temple will be able to render this by simply calling the new dropdown without again having to call any additional methods. And inside of this function, we are going to return the dropdown, which is the temple function that we have down here. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. Then we need to pass in as an argument the pointer to the dropdown and then call the render method, which has this exact same shape. So we need to pass the context first of all and then the IO writer. And finally, we get to the template itself. So this is going to return a div. Inside this div we are going to have the trigger button and then we are going to have the wrapper around all of our items. We're going to skip over the CSS stuff because that's not the focus of this video but we essentially have here a button and then a box that is going to be centered below our trigger button. If you want to learn more about how to build web applications with HTMX, Go and PostgreSQL, then go to webdefuel.com forward slash HGSB or click the link in the description down below to join the HTMX Go SAS blueprint. Now let's take a look at how we can use this component inside of a different temple template. So inside of the base layout, we are going to say add component, then let's ensure that we import this correctly and then we can simply call the new dropdown function 
and this is going to render correctly again because this implements the render method with the correct shape. So now let's save this and let's navigate to the browser and see exactly how this looks. So as you can see we have here the shape of our button and then we have here the wrapper where all of the items are going to be displayed. So we are missing here the drop down label so we want to inside of this pass in an option. So we are going to say component that with drop down label and we are going to call this one open. So now after we save this and we navigate back to the browser, let's refresh and now we see the label correctly displayed of this trigger button. Now keep in mind that we still haven't implemented the Alpine.js logic, so we still see this box by default which is not hidden and we still don't have the toggle functionality. That's exactly what we are going to do right now. Let's navigate back to the drop down template and here we want to add the following stuff. First of all, we want to add here the data or the state of this element and here we need to type x-data and then inside of quotes we want to pass in a JavaScript object and we want to say that open is false by default. So when we navigate initially to this page, we want this drop down to be hidden and only when we click on the button it is going to be displayed. And now let's add two different attributes to the button element to ensure that when we click on it, it opens the drop down, and when we click outside of it, it closes the drop down. So, first of all, we want to say here at click, and then we want to say that when we click on this button, we want the open state to be the opposite of what it currently is. This means that it is going to toggle the drop down when we click on this button. And then when we click on the outside, we want the open state to equal false. And finally, we want to add the correct attributes to this div element to ensure that it hides and shows according to our open state. So first of all, we want to say x-show and this needs to be open. So essentially Alpine.js is going to look for this value that we have here. And if it is true, then it is going to show this element and if not, it is going to hide it. And then we also want to add the following attribute, which is x-cloak. And if we take a look at our app.css file, this essentially means that we want to have this display none show inside of the browser by default, so that this doesn't flash the drop down inside of the browser when we initially render it. Now let's close this and let's save the file. And if we now navigate back to our browser, as you'll be able to see by default, this is now hidden. And if you click on this, it now displays our list of items, or in this case, the wrapper around what is going to be the list of items. And if we click outside this button, it is going to hide this box. And it is also going to toggle when we click on this open button, again, because we have this opposite of open so it is going to toggle between both of these states and we still got one thing left to do before we can move on to the drop down item component and that is to ensure that we have a nice animation when this drop down shows so let's paste the following attributes and here we have the following we have this x dash transition and this is essentially an attribute that Alpine.js provides us with to help us define our behavior when it comes to the transition or the animations. So we specify here first of all the enter and then we also have this leave and both of these classes are only going to be included on this element when the transition is occurring. So before we uh, actually start a transition and after the transition is over these classes are not going to be included we only want to add here classes that are important for us to specify in this case to tell in CSS what the transition behavior is going to be in this case we want to specify here transition then we want to say that this is going to be is out and then the duration of this transition then we have the start, so this is essentially where we want to go from, so the class that we initially start at, and these are going to be opacity 0 and minus translate y2. So this is going to go from the bottom to the top. And then we have the enter end, 
So this is the final state of this transition, which is going to be opacity 100. So we want to go from not seeing this drop down to seeing it. And then we want the translation, uh, translate Y to be zero. And then we do the exact same thing for the leaf. So we have this exact same classes. So we have transition. In this case, we have is in, and then we have duration 100. And we start at the opacity of 100 and translate Y zero. And then the final state of this, when it leaves, so when it hides from the DOM, is going to be opacity zero and then minus translate Y2. Now let's save this file and let's take a look at how this animation looks inside of the browser. So if you refresh the page and we now open this, as you can see, this now has a nice animation when we either open the drop down or we close it. Now let's move on to the drop down item component. So we're going to paste all of this code and now let's take a look at everything that's happening here. First of all, we want to specify here an int type that is going to be called drop down item s. And we'll be using this to let our component know if we want to render this as a button or a hyperlink. So usually when we have a drop down with multiple items, those items can either be buttons or hyperlinks, and we want to take that into account inside of our code. And again, we have these constants that we define. First of all, we have drop down item as button. This needs to specify here the type, and then we say here equals iota, which means that this is going to be zero. And then we have the following one that is going to be drop down item as hyperlink. Next, we have the type drop down item, which is a struct. This includes first here the as state or the as field that we want to keep track of. And then using temple, we can also have multiple attributes that we can pass into this component. Then to render this component, we do the exact same thing as with the previous one. So we say new drop down item. We pass here a slice of options and it returns the pointer to the drop down item. Then we initialize the drop down item struct and we pass the default attributes, which is going to be empty by default. Next, we range through each one of the options. We call the options by passing the pointer to the drop down item as an argument and we return it down here. Then the drop down item component is going to have two different functions that we'll use as options. First, we have with drop down item as, and we need to pass here the type that we've previously created. And then we specify here the as, which has this type and we need to pass in the value that we grab from here. And then we also have with drop down item attribute. And in this case, instead of passing in all of the attributes at once, we want to sort of split this between multiple different functions if we want to pass multiple attributes. So we say here that we want to grab first of all the key and then the value. And that's because the type of temple dot attributes is simply an alias, as it says here, to map where the keys are strings and the values are any. So that's exactly the same shape that we want to pass here. We grab the key, which is a string, the value, which is any, and then we say d.attributes, then we pass the key and finally the value. In this case, we don't need any function to specify the label and that's because we'll use the temple children to accomplish that, but we'll take a look at that in just a second. Next, we have the render method, which does exactly what the previous component does. So it takes in the context and the IO writer and it returns an error. And then we want to use this private temple function to return this down here. So we call the temple template here. We pass in the drop down item and then we call the render method with the context and the IO writer. And finally, we get the drop down item component itself which first of all checks if this is a button or a hyperlink and renders accordingly. So if this is a button, then we want to render here the button element. It is going to have the following classes and then we want to spread the attributes and also pass the children here that we'll use as the label. And then we want to do the exact same thing for the hyperlink. If this is an hyperlink, we want to render the following element with the exact same classes. And then we also want to spread the attributes 
and pass the children, which we'll use as the label. If you want to learn more about how to build web applications with HTMX, Go and PostgreSQL, then go to webdefuel.com forward slash HGSB or click the link in the description down below to join the HTMX Go SAS blueprint. And now to use the drop down item component, we simply need to pass them in as children inside of the drop down component. So here we want to call add component that new drop down item. And then to specify the label, we also pass this as children. So we say here item one, and then let's specify here multiple items. So we also want to have item two and finally item three. So now let's save this and let's navigate back to the browser. So now if we refresh this and we click here, as you can see, we have a list of items. So we have item one, two and three here inside of the dropdown. Now let's modify the behavior of two of these items. First of all, we want to add here an attribute that console logs a message each time that we click on it, because keep in mind this by default is going to be a button. So if we say here component with drop down item attribute, we can say here on click and then we can say that on click we want to console log clicked. And now if we save this and we navigate here back to our browser, let's open here the console and let's ensure that this works correctly. So we need to add here a comma at the end. Now let's save this. And let's confirm that all of this works correctly. So now if we click here and we click on item one, this is going to close the drop down because we are clicking something outside of this trigger button and it is going to console log this message here for us. And now let's also try to make this one be a hyperlink. So to accomplish this, we want to say component that with drop down item S and we want to say here component drop down item as hyperlink. And then we also want to add here an attribute. So we are going to say here we drop down item attribute and we want to say that the link is going to be clicked or in this case forward slash click. Now this route doesn't exist, so we are going to see an error, but that doesn't really matter. So let's refresh this page here now. And if we now click on the item two, as you can see at the bottom left corner, it is very small. You probably can't see it, but it says there for slash click. And if you click here, we now are taken to this route. And we see here the 404 page not found. And this means that the drop down now works correctly. So we not only have the ability to now reuse this across an entire project, but we also have the ability to modify the behavior of each one of the dropdown items. So we can add additional attributes to each one of these. We can modify the behavior even further by modifying the dropdown um, temple file. So this makes our job much, much easier when building UIs using Go, Temple and Alpine.js. So with this being said, I hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you on the next one.